Hello, um, Max Drake here. I'd like to talk to you about this app, which is basically a um, app for asking questions in a webinar. You'd actually have a webinar happening and the audience can then ask questions and they would be moderated and then passed through. Um, this started out on uh, an exercise that I was doing, which was this one here, which is a menu. I suddenly thought I'd try using the Google form because I'm in the Hey Glide testing area. Um, uh, so I suddenly thought, what a great idea, the forms. This one is basically looking at um, some menu items for pizzas and how you'd order those. And again, you can put your email ID in there and the time that you actually sent it in there and you can place your orders. So you can put some numbers in here. It can do a calculation on that. It can send you, I was then looking at trying to send an email to get a bit of a feedback and something like that. But one of the glitches that hits straight very early on, that if I actually go to fill out this form and I say, I want one of those and I want three of those and I want, whoa. Um, if I submit that form there and I go back to the sheets, you'll see it brings in something that I don't want. I actually want to have numbers coming through here. Now, inside Google Forms, it actually has um, a couple of things. It's got a required field that the Glide Forms hasn't yet, which allows you to say one of these um, items is required, like I require your name to be in there, and I require you to at least answer one question, otherwise you have an invalid form, so it's a waste of time dealing with. The other thing that you actually have in there is this response validation. So inside the response validation, you're suddenly saying, you can only put a number. And if you don't put a number, it just said, oh, sorry, I won't accept that. Thank you very much. Go away. Or, you know, you put in a rect. And again, within the number, there's also, it's a whole number or is a number or between or equal to or less than or whatever. You can actually have text things. next, And for the text, some of them contains, it's an email address. So it'll only do that or it's a URL. So you actually have um, this the validation thing that limits what comes through. Now you could in here get around this problem by actually just getting a formula to actually check to see that it's a, a it's a number. And therefore you can suddenly saying, well, if it isn't a number, email them back and say, no, or that form isn't valid, go away. I'm not actually filling out that order or doing anything like that. Um, so I say I thought too hard. I'm sure they'll figure it out at some point in time. And Mark says that apparently validation will be coming to the form in the future. He has not no specific time on that. But I thought it's such a the form such a great thing. I use it for my personal finance app. When I first set it up, I actually used Google Forms to do it. And then I found Glide was a much more superior solution to the thing. And now I have my personal finance app that I use all the time. And there's a copy up there. So what I did was I went, I go mooching around with the opposition and things like that. So I go and look in the app sheets and see what um, apps they have got developed. They have an awful lot of um, uh, checklists or audit apps or um, inspection app type things where you just press a button saying, yes, it's got four wheels on it, you're safe to drive. But one of them that I thought was quite interesting, that I thought was a really good exercise for doing for testing this out, was actually a, um, a webinar app where you could post in a um, question, it can be moderated, and then it would be going onto a pending list. And then when the uh, presenter answered that question, it would then come off the pending list. So I thought, oh, well, that's a nice thing to actually try. So it's a good exercise to actually do this. So, um, and then I took it a step further, is not only could you pose a question to the seminar, but they could also ask you your opinion on certain things. So if it was a certain topic, and you wanted to gauge the audience reaction on if it's a strong issue or whether they should steam on further and do more um, effort, put more effort into that particular area or into another area, they could get feedback from the audience of what they felt like because, again, they were coming to that presentation because they're all like-minded or whatever. So I thought, oh, we'll do a double switch thing. But going straight back to the simple one here is that you actually put in your name and we'll go... Uh, bah. I just have trouble with all the names here. And then I've just added one for topic. Then now I've got a topic, which is another. And the question is, how are you? I start typing long questions. It's a bit dull. Um, so that one submitted. Boom. Comes all the way through. Now, it doesn't pop up on the to be asked questions here. So they can see 
what is being moderated and what questions that the um, uh, presenter is going to be dealing with after he's done his presenters and gone into the Q&A session. So he can suddenly say, oh, well, mine's number three or number four. Um, now, uh, this isn't refreshing right away because inside the formula sheet, I'll just show you, I've got, I've got to drag that down for those to turn up. And I think I might actually have some formulas and other things that I'm supposed to have dragging down to all of these as well. Um, that if they're not there, they're not there. But I haven't got them cycling through at this point in time because it's really just a demonstration app. So that comes through onto here. Now, um, uh, I then have the moderators app. Now, the first thing in the moderators app is that I've just got the same Quick, I've just got the list of everybody's questions. So, in fact, it's really just a list of all the questions through here. And if I just go through there and reload this sheet. Now, I'm reloading these ones, but what I'd actually do in real, if I was setting up this for proper, is that I would actually put a trigger, a time trigger, and just trigger all of them to actually update every minute or so, or a certain time, so that it's constantly live and doing, so that you don't have to do any refresh. It just comes up as it is. So this is the list of the questions and this is the people who are asking the questions. Now what this is good for is that if there's one person dominating either one a specific opinion or they put in something like 15 questions, all you need to do is just moderate or accept one of them. And then you can actually say, um, hmm, should have done that there. Oh. That's where it is. So you can actually see which ones, uh, so you can moderate which ones are going through there. So first of all, you've got an idea of who they are. And then if a certain topic starts overriding or people repeat the things, you can actually filter those out and actually only let one or two of those through. So um, that one there, we moderate and we just say, yes, that's okay there. And um, so the moderated, I, those two ones are looking the same. Initially, that was the idea was that that was just a list. And this one was where you could actually go in and do the moderation. But um, uh, that's fine. I didn't actually want that in there. Um, so that comes through onto that. So once they moderate these, um, uh, it can then comes on to the presenters. Now I'm just going to reload the sheet here. And whatever ones have come through, um they've come through that way now i did thought i'd had it no i had it this way um so that it's a bit messy as far as it comes out but they all they have is the questions and also the questions are anonymous they just have a question and the topic that they're on so that they can just answer those and they just work their way down through the thing i did want it so that they could actually turn a switch on but at the moment with the setup that i've actually got is i've got the switch here is that if they've answered the question they go click on that one they reload the sheet and if i come to here and reload that sheet that one there should disappear because it's actually been said that it's come through. Now, how does it work? We have this one sheet with the questions that are coming and landing in on it. On it. I've yet to get the time to come through there. And I've got this one here called Post. Now, this one just says all and it has the X on it. So that comes through onto the moderated that I'm just using an inline list coming through there that just says pull all of the ones that have been added onto here. Although I have got a formula um, running down onto these other ones as yet. I'd, uh, I'd need to tidy that one up. Now, the next one is the posed. If the question is posed, so yes, it's moderated. And then if it's answered, I don't want to see it. If it hasn't been moderated, I don't want to see it either. Only if it's been posed, or sorry, moderated, then I want to see it is it's a question that's been posed, but it hasn't been answered. So those are the only ones that are going to come up onto my to be asked question. Now, this one here is just an array formula. So I'm just dragging anything across from the other sheet one as long as it actually has the yes in the column. If it doesn't have the yes in the column, I'm not showing it. So only the questions that need to be asked are showing up on the um, to be asked column here and again I'm trying to anonymize it I could actually put the name of the person in there but I don't want them to have that I actually just want them to have the topic and what the question is um, so that comes through there um, I would have liked uh, and if I was building this again I'd actually use the um, question here 
uh, I'd do, sorry, I, I wouldn't make this an array formula. I'd actually make it so somehow the switch here, I can then do a switch here and make it um, uh, change this switch at the point here. So therefore, the presenter has the control. Now that should go away. There he goes. Um, the presenter has a control of he goes through and steps through the answers. Now, what is also good about this is that you can just grab all of this information and, like, you've only got through so many questions. So all of these ones have been unanswered. You can then grab these questions that have been unanswered. Um, you could just easily just go and bang a filter in there um, and actually just go uh, false. I don't want blank. And you've just filtered out all of those. You can grab that information there straight away. Bang it into an email and give it to the You've activated say, me by using you a please, scheduler. Um, can you please um, answer these questions? And then you can either put that in uh, a response email that you've sent saying, thank you very much for coming to the webinar. And you're saying, these questions weren't answered. Here's the answers to those questions there. Or else you could put it on a website. So it's quite good that you've suddenly gathered all of this data, which is really brilliant to have, you know. And and, and I find sometimes, you know, there's been some quite interesting answers, um, uh, but they haven't been answered, which is a bit clear. Okay, is that, no, <laughs> did that wrong. <laughs> um, uh, so that's it. Now the other thing which I'm using uh, again is uh, it, there's a two-way process. So what I can then do is there's a couple of topics or things that the people in the webinar or the front of the, the webinar was to actually give information about a certain topic. And then they wanted to find there's certain issues that need actions or maybe two or three things that need actions and where should they put their focus. So they actually want the attendees to give a bit of feedback of where people's general feelings of where the thrust could be. So you can actually get feedback in this form by actually just putting in your name and we have a dear address. And we'll say the possum drop one, and then they can actually. This is just something uh, they do helicopter drops into the uh, bush with poison for possums, which were brought in from Australia for fur trade, and they sort of kill all the um, eat all the eggs and stuff like that. So it's a strong opinion or something like that. So people can actually give their feedback on that, and then another one will say climate or whatever opinion that you actually want. So we got named you, and this is Thomas. And he has action on time change. He strongly agrees, and we say submit. Now straight away, those ones go in there. Um, and if we just go into the moderators app, the moderator can see the reply. Now you see all these semi blanks coming through here. The reason for that is that I did a quick and dirty idea of the reply coming through here, and so I put both the things on the same sheet on the same line. So you've got blanks for every other one that they fill out. Now, straight away with this, one of the things that I've seen which have been quite useful in a re webinar is that you can maybe, um, you can then filter these or do a sum and you can actually have a live. Oh, 20 people have answered this question and 10 have answered disagree or strongly disagree or this and that and the other. So straight away, while you're actually in the webinar itself, you can actually say, oh, can you please press these buttons? And you can start gauging people's opinion on it. So it actually influences where the webinar goes. So maybe there's a five minute slot at the end, suddenly saying, well, from your feedback, we're finding that people want us to do in this way. We will then go and do a little bit of research on this and we'll come back to you and then we'll see how it was, you know, and then we can get a yes, no. You know, I suppose that's another thing that you can actually have a yes, no button on certain topics and things that you can actually vote um, on quite quickly. And you could just do a simple formula in here. You can say, if this is one, then add to the Bob and you can actually just have a couple of things just to do a, a, a ticker or a timer or a counter or something like that. And then you could actually pop that up onto here so it says the total number so you just do a count all so the number of people who've actually responded you do a count all and then you can or count and then you could actually just filter down as to how many is actually in each field of the things and divide it by 20 percent said this or 30 percent by that and there's no reason because of the fact on this first one here 
um, this is in details that you couldn't grab that information and actually put it somewhere. So you could actually do those calculations on a different sheet over here, and you could actually just put those answers through of the results through here, one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. So they could get immediate feedback as well on their phones. So it's a two-way feedback thing that would be quite a useful um, idea. Now another thing that came through as well, um, I, I, Megan uh, Locke has been doing some stuff she's got this one which she shared and this is something which um, you could also do with this is that if you're using this sort of app continuously or something like that and you've got a lot of data that you're trying to grab out a lot of the times uh, Megan ended up um, sharing this sample script and sheet for importing data without formulas which she basically has this sheet here and uh, in the sample sheet you put in the source code of your um, thing so this is the code of this sheet so if I want to bring information from something like this sheet here I would take this ID and put it into this point here and for the destination sheet if I wanted it to have to come into this one and import data I would use this sheet ID here so those are the two IDs that you do. Then you'd actually have the tab names in the ranges that you actually wanted. Well, this one doesn't need a range. It actually creates it itself. And then the other one as well is if you want to blow the data away in the original app um, as well. So if you wanted the original sheet of that data blown away. Now, I think this is really brilliant. I'm really pleased with this. So it's very kind of making to share this because I do my um, personal finance app. I actually only do on a monthly basis just so that it doesn't fill up with too much data and then I go and grab the data or well, I actually just save the save that sheet as a copy so that I can keep that information so that I can do a bit of post-processing just to kind of re-do um, my forecasting of my expenses of where they're actually going. But then I can actually blow away that thing as well. So this, I think, is a really good tool and I'd like to say um, thank you, for Megan, for sharing that. Um, I, but again, that would be another little an extension that you can do this. So if you were doing this in a seminar or webinar and it's just constantly clearing out so that you've got a lot of attendees and things like that, you would use that just to grab that information and pull it off that sheet to keep it as light as possible so that it's as responsive as for what you need. Um, anyway, I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you like the video, can you please give it a thumbs up? Thank you very much.